Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com and we are here today with lesson number eight on learning to use your BeagleBone Black microcontroller. What we're going to do today is we are going to learn how to do digital reads or how to input the read state from a pen. With digital reads we can read one of two things, either zero or one. That would be like low or high or you could consider it true or false. What's really important is when we're doing digital reads <clears throat> from uh, pins that we have set up as inputs, the BeagleBone Black wants to operate at 3.3 volts, and so we need to make sure that we're referencing things to 3.3 volts and not 5 volts. And so we are very careful here that our rail is established by pin 3 on header 9. And if we come back and look at our chart, Pin 3 on header 9 is in fact 3.3 volts. <clears throat> then we are also using pin 1 on header 9 as ground. <clears throat> so we are making a 3.3 volt rail here and we are making a ground rail here. Another thing, it's a little more complicated to do this with the BeagleBone Black than it is with the Raspberry Pi. On this type of example on the Raspberry Pi, we used internal pull up and pull down resistors. And so with just a programming line, a command in our a program, we could set up an internal pull up resistor or an internal pull down resistor. I have looked through all kinds of information and I have not found an easy way to activate the pull up and pull down resistors on the BeagleBone Black from Python. And so hence, we are going to have to use a good old fashioned external pull up resistor. Or actually, this is a pull down resistor because we're connecting it to ground. Your pull down resistor needs to be a thousand ohms or more. If you don't have a thousand ohms, use a 2000 ohm, but don't go below a thousand ohms. It needs to be a thousand ohms <coughs> or greater. 1 to 5K would probably work just fine for this example. We have two buttons. This is the top button. This is the bottom button. The top leg of the top button goes to the rail. The middle or the bottom leg goes to the pin that we're going to read. In this case, it's pin 11. And then we have the pull down resistor, 1000 ohms, which then takes us to the uh, ground rail. Similarly here, this one is tied to the 3.3 volt rail. The read pin goes to pin 13. Let's make sure 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13. Yes, that's pin 13. So we're using pins 11 and 13 that we're going to set up as <coughs> digital <coughs> digital input pins. So go ahead and build this circuit. You do want to be a little bit careful when you're doing this. You want to make sure that you don't short out these pins. Like if you have them set up as an output and then you hook them up as inputs uh, without being real careful. Say you mash the button without the resistors in there correctly. You can actually burn out your pins, if not your entire BeagleBone Black. So proceed with caution. Hook things up carefully. Check your wiring, check your code before you actually move forward. This is one of those places that you need to be a little bit more careful than normal. You can see that I have it hooked up over here, top button, bottom button. I have my pull down resistors and things over here hooked to pins 11 and 13. So we are ready to go. <coughs> Once you get this hooked up, you are ready to begin writing your code. So let's go ahead and do that. You can see that I have a terminal window. I am logged in as root. Where am I? I am in my root uh, folder. Uh, if you remember, I, for these examples, have set up a folder called my underscore Python. If you haven't done that, you can do it now with a make directory mkdir in my Python. It won't like it. I put this in because I've already got that folder. But you can do it and create it. I like to go down into that folder with a change directory cd my python. Why do I do that? Because I don't have to keep entering the path names. I'm right there where the programs are going to be. Uh, <clears throat> what are we going to call this program? Nano will edit the program or create, uh, create the file. We will call it button push. Button push. Okay. Nano button push. 
We are now in the file, editing it, ready to go. First thing we need to do, we need to load the most excellent Adafruit library. So import Adafruit, got to type it exactly the way I am, Adafruit, bbio.p, or uh, let's see here, we would gpio. So we're going to call this uh, import Adafruit bbio.gpio as gpio, just like that. We're going to want to put some delay. Uh, let's see, this wasn't active. There it goes. Okay. At import Adafruit underscore bbio gpio as gpio just like that. That should work. Now, we, uh, you, if you have the most recent version of the Debian Wheezy operating system for the BeagleBone Black, you should already have this library on your system so you can import it without a problem. If you try to import it and you get an error and you typed it in exactly right like it is here, then you probably have an older version and you need to go back and update your operating system and upgrade your operating system and it should bring this in and then you should be able to import it without a problem. We're also going to want to put some delays in here so we're going to import from time we're going to import sleep so that we can put some delays in here. We're going to set our buttons up. Top button is equal to which header are we on? The left header which is P9 and then which pin are we on? On P9 we are on pin 11. Our bottom button is equal to, we're still on header P9 this time we are on pin 13. That should set those up. Next thing that we're going to need to do is set those two buttons up as input buttons. And so we're going to do gpio.setup. This is gpio.setup. And we are going to set them up as, uh, first of all, i got to say which one. Top button. So I'm going to set up top button and I'm going to set it up as gpio.in. I'm saying that top button, I want to set up top button as an input button. I want a gpio.setup, which button? Bottom button dot gpio dot in. <clears throat> now both of my buttons are set up as input buttons. So now I want to loop and just sit and read those buttons and sit and read those buttons over and over and wait until I get a button push. So how do I loop forever in Python? Well, I can say while one because while, W-H-I-L-E one, because one is always one. And if you say while one, you will loop forever. That semicolon indicates that the clause is starting. We tab to indicate to Python what's going to be in the clause. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to read the top button. So I'm going to say if gpio.input, so I'm doing a read from which pin? Top button. So this is the read command, gpio.input of top button. If it is pushed, it's going to return true. If it is not pushed, it's going to return false. And so I can just do an if conditional. If this is true, then what do I want to do? I want to print. And do you see why I'm tabbing over? Because this is now a new clause. This is the if clause. And so I've got to tab over to indicate that print. What am I going to print? I'm going to print top button is pressed. Okay. Now I'm going to read the bottom button. If <clears throat> gpio.input bottom button. In that case, what I want to do, print bottom button is pressed. That looks good. 
okay, after the loop, I need to clean things up. So after we leave, we want to do a GPIO.clean up. That releases those pins and leaves everything alone, kind of releases everything so the next guy can come in and do things without getting an error message. The problem is, is that if I have a while here, this is going to loop forever here and you would never get here. The only way you would have to control D to kill the program. And then when you kill the program, it would kill it and it would never get down here to clean up. So we need a way to clean up. Look at this. I'm going to say if <coughs> GPIO dot input of top button and GPIO dot input of bottom button. What does that mean? That means they're both pressed. Okay, if they're if they are both pressed, bottom button, then what do I do? I would break. And that's going to break out of this while loop. And then you'll get down to uh, this GPIO cleanup. So this is saying if the top button and the bottom button are pressed at the same time, then come down here and clean up. And just to see that that happened, we can come down here and say print goodbye, come again soon. Okay, so now how do we save the program? Control O, enter, and then uh, it's saved now. So let's just go back and review this. We import the library, we import the sleep. Ah, we forgot to put any delays in here. And so we better put a delay just so that it doesn't run too quickly. And it would probably be good to put the delay after those if statements. And so we're going to come uh, right here. This We put it here indented because then it will still be part of this while loop. Okay, so then I'm going to put a sleep of 0.2 seconds and that way it's not just running like crazy. It slows it down, gives it time to get good reads. Also, when you're doing uh, reading from these buttons, putting a delay in there is a way of in effect sort of debouncing the switch. If you put a delay in there, you can digitally debounce the switch pretty good. Okay, so let's go back and look at our program now. So we import sleep, we set the top button to be on header 9, pin 11, we set the bottom button to be header 9, pin 13, those are those two pins there. We say gpio.setup, uh, so we set the top button as an input, we set the bottom button as an input, and then the way this thing is going to work is if the button isn't pressed, over here through this resistor, it's seeing ground. And so when it sees ground, it's going to return a false or a zero. If we press the button, then we have a dead short to the rail. And when we have a dead short to the rail, we're going to read a one. That's how a pull down resistor works. And so we're going to read the top button and say it's pressed. We're going to read the bottom button. If it's pressed, we're going to say it's pressed. And if we press both of them at the same time, then uh, we're going to break out of here. And just understand that you're not able to see this all at once. Let me see if I can make that a little a little smaller so you can see the whole thing. Uh, I hope you can read this all right. Okay, I, I hope you can read this all right, but we can get it all on the screen now. If gpio.input of top button and gpio.input of bottom button, if we're pressing both buttons at the same time, then uh, at, at that point we're going to break out and then we'll just come down here and tell them goodbye. So let's control out of here. So we're going to control O, press, and then we're going to control X. And now let me go back to the larger font now. So I'm going to say edit preferences. I just want to make sure that you can read this good. So we're going to say, I think we were on <clears throat> like an 18 and that seemed to be something pretty reasonable. Okay. Let me say clear. That did not change. Let me, there we go. Font 18. That should be easy to read. So let's do uh, an LS to see what our programs are. And that was button push. So we are going to Python button push. 
all eyes on the screen here. When I do that, absolutely nothing happens. Why does nothing happen? Because I haven't pressed a button, and so it's just sitting there looking for a button press. When I press the top button, it should say that the top button was pressed. Are you ready? Look at that. Top button is pressed. Yes, it saw that. I take my hand off, and then it recognizes it's not being pressed again. Ready for the bottom button? There it goes. Boom! Bottom, bottom button is pressed. This thing is working like a charm. Top button is pressed. Nothing is being pressed. Bottom button is being pressed. Yes! This is working. Now let's see if we can... Remember that little trick we were going to try to edit, exit out, print a goodbye, and uh, and then clean up our GPIO pins if we press both buttons. And so here we go, ready to press both buttons. And we go. And look at that. Goodbye, come again soon, and we're back to the command prompt. Now if we run it, we should not see an error because we released our pins last time. Look at that. There it goes. Top button is pressed. Bottom button is pressed. Both buttons are pressed. Goodbye. All right, guys. We now see, using an external pull-down resistor, how we can read simple digital reads uh, on our Beagle Bone Black. And so this, this is a, a simple way that you can get some input from, the, uh, uh, from circuit elements or buttons or switches or things like that. Okay, this has been a great lesson. I feel like we've learned a lot in this one. If you like the lesson, give us a thumbs up. Think about sharing this lesson with your friends. Let's get some more people working on the Beagle Bone. You know, let's try to build a little bit of a user base here. I plan on doing some more great lessons. Hope you will continue to follow me. Paul McWhorter, topdeckboy.com. We will talk to you guys later.